Hi, I'm Stephanie Laska. I lost 140 pounds and created Dirty Lazy Keto. Thanks for joining me here on the YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe and enjoy the show. So today's topic is the first week starting or restarting Dirty Lazy Keto. What if you've been doing this a while? Does this still count? Yes, it does. Because sometimes we have obstacles or we have setbacks or we have challenges or plateaus, right? And sometimes we have to just start over and get back to the basics. So think about the first week on Dirty Lazy Keto in a broader sense. It doesn't have to be like your first day and you're just figuring this out. It can also be you're restarting or rebooting or trying to reinvigorate your motivation because we all know it kind of waxes and wanes, right? So tell me what brought you here today to listen to this topic. I'm curious if you are starting for the first time. Tell me if you are, you know, rebooting or if you've had some challenges and you're trying to re reboot, get back to basics. So share that in the comments. I think that's very helpful. And it lets everybody in the group know that they're not alone, right? No one's an expert here. We're all kind of learning and falling down sometimes and then helping each other get back up. So I don't want you to be shy. And the goal today is for me to give you a 10 step plan of action for the first week that you're starting Dirty Lazy Keto. And remember when I say starting, that means like a broader sense, starting, restarting, rebooting. But my goal here is to give you 10 steps, like an action plan. Um, and this way you can get back to basics and not waste any time. Sound good? And I'll give you some great advice. So we're going to just chime this out with 10 steps. So. Ready? I'm excited. I'm excited. This is, I think, a great topic. I think it's very helpful and practical. And those, I think, are the best. Plus, I have a ton of show and tell items, which always makes life more entertaining, in my opinion. I like to have a good time. You know, I don't think losing weight should be so painful and embarrassing and shameful and like difficult. I think we should have a little bit of fun, don't you think? So let's get started because. I want you to get started on the right foot. Da -da I need like a drum set. But -da here's my gong. Ready? <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Remember the gong show from like the 1970s? Well, I, seriously, I want you to get started on the right foot because if you're going back to basics or you've been frustrated, you're trying to overcome some challenges, you know, don't just repeat what you did last time or repeat what you did on a different, you know, way of life or way of eating. Um, try to embrace maybe some of these top 10 tips so you can get started on the right foot and go on a new path. And that way you'll be more successful. So here's my first tip. Now I know this might seem a little cheesy. All of my suggestions sometimes are, but I think it's helpful to have a little visual effect. So here's my mirror. This is tip number one. Look in the mirror. <laughs> I can see there's lipstick. I want you to try to let go of trying to be perfect. Now, I know that's really difficult for people like me who are like a type A person, always used to doing well, you know, working hard in school, getting my straight A's, trying to get a promotion or work hard at um, anything. I always just work really hard, but I often fail. <laughs> and that is like so devastating for me, especially I think when it comes to weight loss, when you're starting Dirty Lazy Keto, restarting, I think you have to expect that there are going to be some moments where you're not going to be perfect. So think about it every day. If you would, I want to remind you every single day in the morning when you are putting on your makeup, because I know a lot of the ladies do that. Gentlemen, you can also remind yourself when you are, I don't know, brushing your teeth. So, but I want you to think about every time you're putting on makeup, let go of trying to be perfect. Like, and I mean that in all seriousness, like anticipate that you are going to fall down and make some major mistakes. Anticipate that there's going to be roadblocks in front of you that are frustrating. And that's okay. Like for me, I think that's how I've learned to lose 140 pounds and keep it off for almost a decade is by my failures and by falling down. I don't learn anything when I'm doing well. I'm just like, right? I'm all excited. Like, oh, everything's great. You know, and then you just start pushing the envelope, trying to get away with a little bit more. Um, but when you fall down and you totally screw up, that's where the real learning happens and you start to go, oh, okay, I can't do that again. 
So expect that, anticipate it, and that's okay. I want you to just embrace that and be ready for it every single day. You know, that humility, I think, will get us all in the right mind frame where, you know, it's okay to, to screw up. So number two, we're going to do 10 steps, right? 10 strategies for restarting or starting that first week. In addition to putting on your makeup and reminding yourself that you're not perfect. I'm sorry. None of us are. I want you to caution, to experience a little caution. Oh, I'm trying to do the dramatic reveal. Here it comes. I want to caution you. <laughs> I want to caution you by that first week, putting things off, right? Because we all know what happens when we want to start, start something, restart something, reboot something. We all start thinking, oh, oh yeah, I'm totally gonna start. But what is it that you say? Type it in the comments, because I bet I could guess. <laughs> I think a lot of people write, I'm gonna start Monday. Anyone out there said that? Or they say, I'm going to start or restart after a vacation, right? Who does that? Anybody? That's why I wore my flower in my hair today. How many of you are like, oh, I'm going to go on vacation and then I'm going to start my first week back. I'm sure that there's some people out there who are thinking that. But again, I want to caution you about postponing anything. So every time when you're out driving and you see these little cones in the road. I want that to help remind you and anchor you. And what I'm trying to tell you today is that when you start postponing things like, oh, I'll start cooking next week. I will start eating healthy next week. I'll start doing blah, 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 blah next week. All of those things, those postponings and whatnot, all of those things are self-sabotage. Seriously. So when you see these, think about it. Am I self-sabotaging in any way? Think about the ways that you tend to do that. You know, it may not be the vacation excuse, but it could be something else. Like, oh, I'm so busy. I don't have time. Um, I have a barbecue. I have work. You know what you tend to say to yourself. So every time you see a cone, remind yourself, am I trying to make excuses? Am I cautioning myself about trying to continue? Am I putting up roadblocks? Ooh, another good analogy. Are you putting up roadblocks to your success? So be aware of all those things and be caution, be cautionary about that. Because you know what? When you have a spark of energy to restart or start or get moving again and reboot, you have to like capitalize on that. You have to like grab onto that feeling and go 100 miles an hour. Like do not wait. I think I drove that point home, right? <laughs> but gather your resources to get started, but then don't obsess about trying to read them all or watch them all or do everything correctly. You know, it's okay to, you know, get prepared and organized, but capitalize on that burst of energy and do something. I recommend you do anything. Just take a little tiny bit of action. It can even be journaling. Like just start by doing something because there's some phrase out there. I'm trying to think of it, but it's like action is the antithesis of anxiety. And it's true. A lot of us feel like a lot of anxiety when it comes to starting, restarting, rebooting the first week. So we just push it off. But all we have to do really is just chip away at it and just do a little tiny baby step like, and you will get moving in the right direction. Seriously, it's a miracle. Just take a baby step. You'll be so proud of yourself. Now, there are a ton of resources that I have for you, and I'm going to go over them, you know, today as I go through the 10 points, um, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. But you're watching this video, so that's a great start because I do have wonderful videos and the support group, as you know, and, you know, this is all how we do it. This is how we make progress is by grabbing onto these resources and diving in. But just don't wait. Just don't wait. Okay. <laughs> all right. Now, here's another piece of advice for that first week of starting, restarting, rebooting. If you are out shopping and you see food in the stores and there's a big giant word on it that says what? What does that say? <laughs> it says keto. If you see food that says keto on it, 
I don't think you need it. So tell me in the comments what foods you have seen at the grocery store that say keto. I'm holding up the, the cereal here. But do you need this and any of the other keto foods, keto breads, keto cere uh, granolas? I don't know. Tell me the things that you're seeing out there. Um, it's good for all of us to be aware of it because I think that folks get excited when they're out shopping. And especially if they're new and rebooting, they feel this need to like buy all this stuff. And they're seeing in the stores like, oh, keto, keto ice cream, keto cereal, keto bread. Okay, my rule of thumb is if it says keto on it, put it back. Don't buy it. I know that sounds crazy, but I had to have this just so I could do show and tell. But honestly, that's one of my rules and it, it helps me because I think too easily those become our crutches. Um, we start to rely on them and then we get angry if, you know, Aldi is sold out or you can't find it or you, somebody in your family eats it all. You know what I'm saying? I think it's going to be helpful if you take a look at what you have in your kitchen, in your pantry, and you start asking yourself what's missing. Like, what do I need? Does that make sense? You know, instead of relying on these like quick keto foods that are out there, just make a list of what you actually really need. So that's my third tip. Uh, tip number four, my recommendation for a successful first week, even if you've done this before, do it again. <laughs> Get out the foods that you plan on eating, your favorites, and get yourself a nice Sharpie. Let's see if I can find one. Here's a nice cute pink one. Get yourself a nice bright, well-working Sharpie and go through all the foods that are currently in your pantry and in your fridge that you plan on eating and calculate the net carbs for yourself. Do it all at once. Don't wait until you're hungry and then you just start mindlessly eating and you're like, oh yeah, it's totally low carb. I can totally eat that. And then you, you know, then we all know what happens later. Then we start lying to ourselves, you know, eating too much of things, or we start miscalculating. Mm-hmm. So I want you to have a successful first week. So go through your labels, calculate how to make the net carbs. Notice the serving size. Um, I think that that's sneaky too. A lot of people say, oh, you know, those candies only, you know, two grams of net carbs for the whole bag uh, or for, per serving, and then they eat the whole bag. I think everyone's done that. Um, but make sure you take a note, like here, this uh, milk, this is an almond milk, unsweetened dairy beverage. And it's one cup is one gram net carbs. So that's pretty good. So I have that written on here and that way I don't make any mistakes. And it's just simple. And you might find some ahas while you do it, which, you know, that's what this is all about, right? You'll be like, ooh, oh, I don't really want that. And then you can make better choices. Okay. So those are, that's the top one, two, three, four suggestions that I have for you. Look, we emptied a whole bucket. Okay, let's go on to number five. This one is kind of funny, but I have my trash can out. Okay, so while you're going through your cabinets and you're taking a look and reading labels, I made the suggestion to you that you may find some things in there that are maybe not what you really want to be eating, right? You might discover some things that your other family members have hidden or you hid for yourself or just stuff you don't want. You're like, I'm over that. So remove or relocate those temptations. Now, obviously, if something is garbage, you can throw it away. If something is charitable, you could give it to charity. But maybe you won't even want to give it to charity. You know, you might start thinking, I don't want some, you know, person at a shelter enjoying like all this sugary garbage. You know, I think that you'll have some compassion and say, I don't think so. I think this is trash for everyone. Maybe not the children, though. <laughs> My kids might be mad. And that's why I suggested for some of you with this, um, you know, going through the cabinets and things, relocate these temptations. And what I mean by that is move it to like a higher cabinet move it to something inconvenient. Uh, for example, at my house, my kids don't mind getting down low and like crawling in the low levels of cabinets, but I hate doing that. Um, I will avoid that at all costs. So that's like a dungeon, a black hole. I can stick anything on the bottom um, shelf of my kitchen and I'll never go there. Similarly, I won't go to the cabinet above my fridge because I have to drag a chair and I got to stand. And I'm so lazy. I would never do it. So I can put things like for my quote unquote carb eating children or if my husband wanted something delicious, carbalicious that I don't want, you know, I just put it in those areas. 
I think the out of sight, out of mind is quite powerful. Um, if that doesn't work for you, maybe you have a different strategy that you can share. Okay, <laughs> that's just what worked for me. Moving along to number six. I think that once you start clearing out stuff and you know relocating things and reorganizing your kitchen, you're gonna be like, dang, I better get my reusable grocery bags out and go to the store. Yeah, because you some of you may have nothing to eat. <laughs> if you're brand new to Dirty Lazy Keto, you might be like, man, I got rid of all my cereal, my crackers, my popcorn, my cookies, my chips, my sugary soda, my cereal, my rice, my pasta. What do I eat? And then you may have to do some serious shopping. For those of you who are just rebooting or revitalizing, re-energizing yourself or getting back to basics, I bet you have a lot of the things you need already in your cabinet. So you don't have to panic. But even still, I think it's helpful to look through and make a list. I hate making, you know, boring to do things and tasks for myself, but I do find the merits in them. I'm more of a, like a rebel, you know, I hate like having to do stuff. But when I'm hungry, like this morning I woke up, I had no Fage, Faye, 5% yogurt, which is like my favorite. Oh, I was really sad. <laughs> And I had wished I had been to the store. I was like, dang it. Oh. I mean, seriously, I was really mad at myself. All I had to do is make a list, keep it up, put it on the fridge. So we all make mistakes. That's okay. But figure out what's important to you and get that grocery list going and be in charge of it yourself. Don't try to push it off on other people, which I've done. I used to get so mad at my husband when he wouldn't buy the things I wanted because he used to always do the grocery shopping. And then one day I realized like, why am I getting so mad at him? Like I can go to the store. I'm a grown woman. I have a driver's license. I, I need to take responsibility for my own health. And so that's what I do. So when I was mad this morning without my Faye yogurt, I was only mad at myself. I'll be going there this afternoon. Um, if you need help with the grocery list, I want to remind you, um, if you haven't already, which I'm sure you have, but if you go to my website, dirtylazyketo.com, and you sign in, it asks for your first name and your email. It's free. Just sign in on the, on the front page. Um, I will put you on my automatic newsletter and the first email includes a free starter keto grocery list. And it's short, it's easy, it's a quick, just, you know, one pager with some tried and true dirty, lazy keto foods that I recommend that you go to the store and buy. So if you haven't done that already, I recommend you do that right away. You can always un unsubscribe. So if you get the first newsletter and you're like, thanks, thanks for the email, I like the grocery list, and then you're done, you can always unsubscribe. I will never know. I think I have 50,000 people on my newsletter. I know, so this is a serious thing. Um, and I will continue to send you helpful emails, notifications, recipes, tips, as long as you want. I mean, I think I have probably a year's worth of emails that I've developed right now, and it's all free, so. Um, Another area you can get help. Oh, I just dropped something. Pardon me. Another area where you can go to get help with groceries, grocery lists, if you want more than just a starter grocery list. Um, if you have your copy of um, Dirty Lazy Keto, Get Started Losing Weight. This is kind of the Bible, the, the go-to, the everything you need to know. This is it right here. And you wanna go to page 233. So 233. Starting here, it's a 16 page grocery list. This took me like a month. And not only does it include uh, recommended foods that are low in carb, uh, moderate in protein, high in fat, but it also has the serving size. That's huge. And the amount of net carbs. So you don't have to do any calculations. You will notice that if you're using Carb Manager or um, Fitness Pal or you know one of those apps, there's a lot of inaccuracies because the information is self-reported. So if you want something that's accurate, I spent month, you know, like I said, a month on this. And I also had editors helping me and double checking facts and, you know, working with the USDA. So I'm correct. If you want the facts, ma'am, they are here. You won't, I won't steer you wrong. I promise. Cause I use that myself and I'm not going to tell myself anything wrong. Um, another book, if you have, I want to make sure, cause I know everyone has different books at home. Um, but if you have the Dirt Cheap Cookbook, you can go to page 49. Um, there's a grocery list that starts on page 49. Okay, right in your book. Now these foods may be different 
because mainly it's the recipes in the dirt cheap for the grocery list. I kind of made it go together. That way you have the foods you need to make the recipes in that book. Um, or if you happen to have the original Dirty Lazy Keto cookbook, this is the first one in four. So there's four books. This is the first one. Um, if you have the original cookbook, it's in page 34. Okay, so 34 is the grocery shopping list. And like I said, they're all slightly different. Personally, I think the best, most accurate one is in here because this book is, like I said, it's your Bible. Um, but here's the thing. The foods that I'm talking about and all these lists, net carbs and blah, 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 they are not required. They're not required. Did you, did you hear that? I'll say it again. They're not required. I know one of you is going to watch this and then email me or message me or write in the comments, but I don't like avocados, but I don't like eggs, but I don't like coconut oil. Okay. If you're allergic to something or you don't like something, don't eat it. You don't have to eat it. Okay. I know that's like, I don't know. It seems kind of obvious to me, but I feel the need to say it because I really get a lot of emails and messages and comments about that. If there's a food you don't like or you don't want to eat or you don't believe in eating or you're allergic, whatever, don't eat it. And please don't ask me for what to substitute because I don't know. You know, if you're allergic to eggs, I don't know how that works with your body. I'm sure that you've had a lifetime of experience avoiding eggs. So I think you would probably be better to answer that question in terms of how to work around that or make substitutions than I would because I eat eggs. So not to be, you know, I just want to be completely transparent that if that's a stumbling block for you, you know, you might want to do some research on your own. Okay, uh, moving on. Number seven, I want you to think about that first week, the meal plan basics. I want you to keep it simple. Like, don't stress out. I know you might have a bunch of the cookbooks and you're like, oh, I got to make all these things and recipes. You know, you really don't, especially that first week when you're trying to reboot. And I have a whole video on this just about meal planning specifically on YouTube. But just think about protein, vegetable, and a fat on your plate. And forgive my kindergarten uh, demonstration here, but that's the truth. Think about adding foods to your plate, not subtracting. Don't be like, oh, I can't have potatoes. I can't have pasta. I can't have this. I can't have bread. Don't worry about the, the negatives. Focus on the adding. Fill your plate with meat, protein, whatever your choice is, with lots of low carb vegetables, and then think about some kind of fat to either cook it in or put on top. Make it simple, okay? It's really as simple as that. As simple as that. You know, I want to run through a few examples, like meat. You can have some pork chops. How embarrassing is this? I've got my $2 off on sale discount rack pork chops to show you because you don't have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to be all fancy. I promise. Buy whatever food, protein you like. Use some oil, some fat, coconut milk, whatever, butter, Crisco, bacon fat. It's up to you. You don't have to be all fancy. There's nothing really special or, you know, expensive required. I do all my grocery shopping at Walmart and other discount stores. Make sure that you're eating a lot of low carb vegetables. I really think that's it. And then don't forget your water. Done. Keep it simple, especially if you're struggling or restarting or this is your first week. Don't try to overcomplicate it. You're just setting yourself up to get frustrated. You know, get fancy later once you get your footing. I want to share, just throw out a few ideas to kind of bring this home. And I want you in the comments as well. Please share an idea that you have that's simple. I think you'll help other people that are watching. Um, here's an example. Cobb salad with ranch dressing. Boom. You're done. Uh, scramble eggs with added vegetables. Maybe some avocado and a slice of bacon. Done. Are you making a comment? I hope that you do because we want to hear your idea. Um, how about today I had some turkey with pesto and I wrapped it in lettuce. Simple. Um, this week for dinner, I had salmon, I had broccoli, and I put some cheese on my broccoli. Delicious. Uh, one of my go-to favorites is just a simple rotisserie chicken, and I do the green beans in a bag right in the microwave, and then put some butter on them. Check. Dinner's ready. I like to do Asian stir-fry, um, especially with shrimp and other low-carb vegetables. Obviously, I'll cook that in oil. 
delicious. And then I just showed you my pork chops, maybe with some asparagus. You could even put some fancy like hollandaise sauce on top or butter or whatever it is that you want to top your, your vegetable and your meat with. It doesn't have to be hard, right? Do you see? I know I'm kind of going fast, but it's all in the cookbooks. There's 400 recipes for you. Um, but vegetarian omelets maybe with some sausage on the side. Uh, grilled chicken you could do with bell peppers. Maybe some guacamole with it. So please share the comments, um, you know, some of the easy, simple meals that you can do this week. I think if you share that and we kind of read each other's thoughts, it might make it a little easier. So I do want to suggest if this is an area you're struggling with, you know, I mentioned all the cookbooks, there's four, but the Dirty Lazy Keto five ingredient cookbook is probably going to be the simplest because it's just basic. It's like five main ingredients. That's it or less. So some have fewer. It's going to be your most streamlined cookbook out of all of them. So if mealtime is something you're not really, you know, wanting to deal with and be all fancy and elaborate, I would recommend starting here. Plus, it's a great book. It's the fourth in the series and it's funny. I always say that, don't I? Well, if you don't like my humor, you won't like it then. So just saying. But honestly, I think if you take a look at some of these suggestions, I want to go to number eight. I think that it's going to help you out. I think you're going to have a very successful reboot or revitalization. It'll help you break a stall, perhaps. Right? Or just get started and have like a really awesome, you know, first foot. So think about number eight is think about, you know, now that you've taken some action and you're getting some traction, action, traction. Uh, think about is there an area that you've struggled with in the past? So I think that's important, right? You know, what's your hot button? Is it like takeout? Is takeout an issue? Do you eat out at a lot of restaurants? I think it's helpful. You know, you don't have to fix it right now, but just be aware of what your particular challenge is. So that way you can do some work on it. You know, are you a person that loves sweets? <laughs> I know I hate showing this, um, but is the sweets, the desserts, is that an area that you need help with? You know, maybe it's something, you know, totally different. Maybe you're working on, I love this thing. Look how big it is. <laughs> maybe you're, maybe you're worried about not getting enough water. Cause for some people that's just, that's it. That's like the whole issue. So think about it. Like what, and you have to be honest. You can't be like, oh yeah, everything's perfect. Mm -mm. Remember number one, like ask yourself, am I relying on too many convenience foods? Are you constantly eating like processed um, granola bars, low carb granola bars or low carb ice cream? Or are you eating a lot of, you know, beef jerky and cheese and, and things that are processed? Cause that could be maybe an area to work on. You don't have to fix it overnight, but think about it. Is that maybe your issue? And it may not be necessarily, I don't know, that, that big of a challenge. It could be like, ooh, I like to go to parties and you're having your cocktail and you're having social time. Maybe that's it. But whatever your challenge is, I think number eight, the tip is to take a look at what you've struggled with in the past and make a plan, do some research, put that aside, put it on your to-do list that that's something you're gonna work on. You don't have to fix it in the first week, but just know like, okay, I'm struggling with eating enough fat or protein, maybe my self-esteem, um, maybe you're challenged by reading labels or you find yourself doing a lot of self-sabotage. Maybe you don't have the support you need, but I do suggest that you try to identify, put your finger on it and figure out maybe what it is you're going to work on next. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that's just honest and human. Um, but I do want to warn you when you are doing your, your, um, you know, putting your finger on the pulse of what went wrong last time. I'll pull this back out again. The caution. Caution. Just because you're like taking a look at your past or taking a look at where you struggle doesn't mean you're going to get sucked into that, like some kind of negative vortex, right? I don't want you like obsessing and going down this negative path where you're like, oh, oh I'm so terrible. I don't know. No, no, no. no, that's not what I'm asking you to do at all. I want you to just identify maybe what your challenges are and then table that for next week and then plan to devote some time to it because you're never going to improve unless you, you know, acknowledge that you're human and that you're not perfect. 
Number nine, we're starting to wrap it up. Number nine, my recommendation for that first week is to choose a very specific SMART goal. So I have a bullseye here. I want you to think about a goal that is specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time sensitive. So this is not going to be like, I'm going to lose 50 pounds by the wedding, you know, and in, um, in three weeks or whatever. No, that is not a smart goal. I'm thinking more like in the next week, by next, you know, seven days from now, I will have what? What's your idea? Make it very specific. Maybe it is, I'm going to, I don't know, park a block away every day. Maybe I'm going to drink a glass of water before I have my coffee every day for seven days. Specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time sensitive. And that way, by the end of the week, you'll start to think, I'm awesome, right? Because you want to achieve your goal. And doing those tiny little goals are really what matters. It doesn't have to be weight related. And um, like I said, it can be behavior. It can be like, instead of having six Diet Cokes a day, I'm going to have three. Because that was one of my goals when I first started out. Or to not drink Diet Coke until after 12 p.m. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> kind of embarrassing. But really, those are the kind of mini goals um, to have, especially in the first week. You don't want to be perfect and learn everything all at once. Just start off small. It might even be emotional. It might be like, I'm going to stand up for myself, um, you know, when I go to a restaurant. Or I'm going to speak up about what I want on my plate when I go to my mom's for dinner. It can be very specific and simple to what it is you're working on. Um, but I kind of hinted at this earlier. I think number 10, the most important, this is, well, they're all important, but this is one of my favorites, I guess. Um, number 10, I want you to celebrate every step. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> celebrate every step that you're taking in the positive direction. And really focus on those non-scale victories you know, we're not talking about weight loss and losing 10 pounds in a week and blah, 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 blah. No, I think that's going to set you up for failure and disappointment. Instead, think about just like, doo, 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 you know, making little tiny baby steps. Think about those baby steps and find a, a community that's going to lift you up, that's going to celebrate you, that's going to encourage you. I think you're in a great place right here, right, with the Dirty Lazy Keto um, community. We are all in it together and we want to help each other. So find these people that will lift you up, that will help you stay accountable, that will encourage you and, and, and be excited and celebrate when you want to go on and tell people, I didn't have a Diet Coke until after 12 p.m. You want those people in your life. Those are your friends and those are the people I like. Okay, so I think that with Dirty Lazy Keto, you're going to quickly discover that Who's this? Who does this in the movie? Do you remember? I bought these at a garage sale and they don't even fit me just so I could do this. What is, what's that mean? Do you remember? Tell me in the comments if you do. That was from a very famous movie, right? There was a lovely lady. What actress was it? I bet you know. And she clicked her heels together and she had like a famous quote, which I bet one of you will know. But basically it was from The Wizard of Oz. And she remembered that she had the magic in her all along, that she could do it. She was amazing and powerful and strong and confident. Do you remember that part? I think it was at the very end. And she says like, hey, I had it in me all along, the ruby slippers. So I talked so fast. But I hope that you really enjoyed today's um, video where we talked about the first week starting or restarting or rebooting um, Dirty Lazy Keto. And if you haven't already, I know I've been encouraging you guys as we've been talking to you know interact and leave comments and please give it a thumbs up. Um, but if you haven't already participated, I urge you to share what your favorite takeaway was and maybe what you're going to start working on this week. Because you'll find that as you put things in writing, it's amazing how it becomes more important to you in your brain and then all of a sudden, you start committing to doing things that maybe before you hadn't even thought of. So commit to it, put it in the comments. And I will be here to cheer you on. Yay! 
I just wanted to say thank you for listening. I appreciate your support. This is a community, Dirty Lazy Keto. We have to help each other. We're in this together, my friends. It's not easy, is it? We got to support one another. So if you found today's video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and then subscribe to the Dirty Lazy Keto YouTube channel. Turn on your notifications so you'll never miss an update. You can also find me on Instagram at Dirty Lazy Keto. And for more information about any of my support groups or any of my books, you can always go to DirtyLazyKeto.com for more information. I'm here to support you. I'm here to help. I know you can do it.